What's the thing that scares you the most? Confined spaces and uh, uh, blood particles in the air, the dark, that coral thing that's been staring at me since I came in here. Chris, I'm scared to death. Welcome to the Sum of All Fear podcast, the show that examines real-life phobias and the horror movies that prey on them. So pour yourself something strong, Feardos, and let's find out what makes you afraid. It's a very full glass of tea. It is. Cup of tea. It's a cup of tea. <laughs> a bit of a spot of tea. It's a spot of tea. It's a spot of tea. It's very appropriate for our... For our uh... Mm-hmm. pip pip diddlyo Oh man, he's defended all of the British out there. I know, but that's kind of what our episode's about. Offending British? Well, no, like the British being very fearfully offensive to some people. The, the, yeah, it's true, true story. And this a lot is, of that has to do with the cliches. Well, I guess we'll we'll find out later on. Will we? Maybe. Might we? <laughs> what is going on? I with don't us know. This week. Oh, this what's week, going on the last this last two weeks? I mean, honestly, really. Last week wasn't bad. I mean, we, I just went into St. Patrick's Day weekend, you know, with my normal St. Patrick's Day fervor, mm-hmm. and uh, and we didn't do too bad. We we actually we were home by ten thirty. The first night we were home by ten thirty, and then the second night I think I got home about the same time too, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Because I came out to check. To but I played see if a little harder. Home. I played a little harder the second night. Well, you started at like noon. Yeah, started early. So when you start <laughs> so, early, you can end early. That's right. That's how it works. See, that's what happens when you're Grandpa Reno. That's right. Start early. That's why I like St. Patrick's Day so much. You can start. You can start early. Why you can't you start early any other day? Uh, but and I got a tattoo. I got a new tattoo that weekend. Uh, you a, did a, a cool ass, a badass tattoo. Yeah, it's it's like a Friday the Thirteenth slash Merle Haggard tribute that says mama tried and it's got a you know the jason mask and the so i was pretty stoked tommy crowder at um uh, at oh my gosh authentic tattoo authentic is that where he's tattoo. At he's been at like four different uh places in the last few years but uh yeah he did a great job on it i was super stoked i posted it up on our on our uh, all of our social media and stuff but this past week has felt like about three a months month. so that's why we didn't record last week was because we don't We had like St. Patrick's Day and then you were leaving early Monday morning. Right. I was going up to Washington State to do some work up there with my teammates, which was very fun. Yeah. And we had and we intended to record like last weekend and and kind of, you know, do those same kind of make it a St. Patrick's Day episode and and then it just didn't happen. So we were like, all right, we'll put it off. You know, we kind of procrastinated and you know, I was a bit hungover that weekend. So we didn't record. And then this week just just freaking! I don't even know what's happened. Leveled our asses. Yeah, like Holy you went off smokes. to your, you went off your trip, and your trip was was a good. It was, it was a good, great. Good trip. The beginning it, of the week was fine. It was great up until you know the descent into Reno. Um, on the flight, the descent into Reno. I'm just, I'm watching um, the uh, abduction of Madeline McCann on um, Netflix, and I'm just watching it, just you know, minding my own business, and I cough. But when I cough. I start vomiting this is right as you're landing, right? Right like, as you're landing. Right as we're coming down. So like they've told everyone be in their seats. The stewardesses are in their seats. You know, everyone is, is the, the lights are dim. Um, and all of a sudden I'm vomiting on myself a lot, a lot of fluid and a lot of sandwich. Oh man. And that's so brutal. Uh, it gets so worse. <laughs> Phobia inducing. And that, yeah, I need to process this, you guys. So now you guys are, are going to kind of hear, uh, the, the making of a phobia um, here and the preventing of one through the processing well, and, and of not one's to emotions. You're, you're, in, you're in your poor walking boot because you have a broken foot. Yeah, I'm in too. my walking boot. I, I had dis. I had gotten it's hard enough when you're traveling. I had dressed down in Seattle uh, to some comfy traveling clothes because I was done with business, and you know, uh, I vomited into the boot. Like oh, it ran God. into the boot. <laughs> it ran into like it puddled. Uh, on my bottom. Um, so I didn't realize it until I got into the restroom in Reno, but I guess the vomit had like puddled up on my bottom. So like right where my bottom sits on the chair, like absorbed so you much said bottom, of it. So cute. Bottom, my bottom, my bottom. Um, and yeah, everybody, I vomited on myself and I tried so hard to get the, the puke bag out and I couldn't because you had to unlock the, 
the little tray table, pull it down, and then pull the puke oh, bag out. Oh, because you were on one of those. Because you were on one of those. I was on a prop plane. On a prop, oh, that's right. I forgot you were on the small plane. I was too. on a prop plane. Oh, I and forgot. so everyone around me is looking at me. Yikes! That's no even, one. No one says helped you at all. Anything. No one said a word. No one said. And anything I was like, to I was me. like, man, I think if I if there was like a young lady traveling by herself and you know she had puked all over herself, like I would have. Tried to help it. The least guy a next bit. to me was visibly uncomfortable, and I could see him out of the corner of my eye, like texting someone or or writing something. And I, I just, you know, that like paranoid He's like, thought this chick is just like, oh my god, I can't wait to get off this fucking plane. So, and the second <laughs> oh, problem so was sad. is that I would have had my carry on because normally when I fly for business, I have my carry on, and then that's it. Right. right. So, so I, I could have grabbed it into. and fucking bailed home to Reno and that just had been it. Right. But no, uh, we're taxiing and I can see everybody, you know, kind of muffling to themselves because it smells like vomit on the plane. Oh, it smells like sick. Like, um, you just had food poisoning too. So oh, it smells like so food yes, poisoning bottom. Yet, but... Uh, it has that food poisoning, like, ugh. <sighs> smell so you were pretty sure that it was food poisoning too because you had you had taken a bite of like a sub sandwich subway sandwich earlier in today, seattle and, and, you, and it was like you, you, and i was like, like uh, it didn't taste right it just it something just, just wasn't weird... right it wasn't sitting right so i just tossed it i was like whatever it was five bucks yeah um so yeah everybody around me is looking at me as i'm like peeling off layers of clothes and trying to like wipe myself off and like collect this vomit that had accumulated oh, all over gosh. me and the floor while everyone is watching me and we're taxiing to our gate oh my Gosh. And I'm wearing like this tank top. Every time you tell me the story, I still, it's so sad. I know. I still have to process it because it still makes me highly anxious. And so I, I know that I need to talk about it. Oh, so the, here people, this is, this is how it's done. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I get up. Um, it's my turn, you know, to exit the plane. I quickly exit. I run in to the restroom. I kind of clean myself off as best I can, but now since in Seattle, they had needed folks to check their bags last minute and had offered to pay the bag fee. I offered to check my bag from my business trip. So you didn't have anything so to change I into. So I didn't you have had to go anything get your to change into. In the baggage claim. And I had to go stand there at baggage claim with the plane full of people who just stared at me oh my when I threw up on myself. <laughs> and I'm in a tank top, which is definitely not suitable for outerwear it was under two different other layers of clothing that i had on You're, you had no bra on i had no bra on. so and the girls I, were just flying and i had my in the hair air. i had my hair up because i had vomited into my hair because it had come on so suddenly oh my god um and so i had to wait for my baggage and then collect my baggage and walk to my damn car and in my boot that was also covered in vomit. Oh. Um, and then I spent the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours uh, laid up from food poisoning. Oh. Uh, and, and then you, we and had you did that night. Well, that night you came up, you, you came home or I came oh, home. Yeah. I had been out to, to dinner uh, for my dad's birthday and you were going to meet us out when you got home or we had talked about you meeting us out. And then you, you told me this story after you got in, like oh, what had happened. And I was, was like, so I'm going to, I'm going to head I'm going to head home. And your sister was like, your yeah, sister's the flight dinner. attendant. She's like, this always happens. Like, don't even worry about it. And I was like, yeah, she had, a, she had, she had, she's had uh, people puke on her before uh, and more than once. God bless them because they yeah. are patient people to, yeah, to do that on that kind of a flight. But I have never in my life, there's, there's two times in my life that I've felt that intense of anxiety to where I wanted to claw my way out of the airplane mid flight and just, get the fuck out of there away from all of these stairs. So it's not that I was afraid of flying. Yeah. Is it that now I was that, afraid? Now you have that associated. So now I next was, time it's going to be like. I was afraid of puking on a plane and not being able to escape. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, I'm still really processing that fear. Um, I'm trying my best. My biggest coping mechanism is just laughing at it because in hindsight, it's a hilarious story, but it also hurts every time I tell oh, it. Oh, man. And then, so then, so then, so we were going to record this weekend. Now it's, and we had like a 20, it's Monday night. Yeah. So we had like this, this, like, you know, we were like, all right, we're going to record on like Saturday or Sunday. Um, baseball got canceled Saturday cause it was raining yeah, and so was we had great. no practices. So I was like, sweet, we got a lot of time, but I was just feeling funky all day. Like just weird. And I had made, 
this pork roast the night before and I, and we, but we had a clog in our, our drain. Sink was clogged. So our sink was clogged and we had, and the plumber was coming the next morning. So, so I normally would like wash my hands a whole bunch and like use real hot water and make sure that I clean up every all my area and stuff. But I was, but because the, the sink was clogged, I couldn't use as much water. Right. And so I was like, you had a bucket the, this, down below that you had to keep emptying. Yeah, and but I, you did, had I was the cutting up this hands. big old, this big old like pork roast, pork shoulder. And I am certain that, that somehow I ended up getting food poisoning yeah. from that experience. Cause the next day I was just feeling really funky from, and, and about 24 hours. It later. sounded like, I know it sounded like we, we, we had a, like maybe we had a stomach flu, but both of us are pretty convinced it was not yeah. a stomach flu. Like there was no other symptoms and we both had food poisoning really bad before. In fact, uh, like when we first started dating, we had it together one time. <laughs> yeah. Like we both got it from the same did, thing and we're just laying in <laughs> bed <laughs> knowing each other like, I don't know, a month or something. Yeah, I know. It was early on. Just shitting our brains out and it was the it was worst terrible. smell. And this was like that all over again, except for like two days apart. Yeah. Except for a couple days apart. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> terrible so i had about Brutal. i had about 10 hours of about the you worst you vomited the worst. so hard that you gave yourself whiplash oh i know my, my neck is all sore today my back i can barely move like my back's all sore yeah it was terrible so anyways <sighs> that's enough of that i think we've 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 successfully gone through our our terrible what we mean to say folks is we're sorry we're sorry it's been two weeks but yeah. it was also kind of necessary yeah it really it really was it's really there were there were dark forces at work yeah it's in, really hard to do a podcast when you have to go make every five minutes they're trying to make that's your new favorite word isn't it is it? i love it oh gosh the goldbergs <laughs> we've been binge watching it and i love it uh but yeah there's dark forces at work i think uh so trying to prevent dark. us from from getting this wonderful information out to you people but we will prevail i think so i hope so i'm trying we're trying to we're doing it now i mean are we we're working on it maybe i don't know we're trying to squeeze this in between like the end of the day and our friend's birthday dinner tonight that uh uh our friend dave is turning 33 33 we're the same age is that right yeah all right but i told him that i'm older than him well maturity wise for no, sure. No, just like I was born a grandma. Oh, well that's true. Yeah. That's true too. <laughs> so yeah, so we had we had we had a good, you know, St. Patty's Day. We had a good we we had, you know, we just kind of went into your your work week and then it was like holy shit. Yeah. Like just all kinds of craziness back to back to back. So fun I'm hoping, shit. I'm hoping Literally. we get back into a uh, a normal schedule again. Yeah, let's try. I could really I could really use uh, some know, stability, some stability. <laughs> feels Amen. Like, feels like some stuff's been, been all over the place. So we still haven't seen Jordan Peele's us yet, which was our plan this weekend. We had, we had, my, my parents were going to watch I, the boys. I knew you were very ill when you backed out. Yeah, of, I backed out. We were going to go see, going we were going to go see us on, on, uh, on Saturday. Saturday. And I backed out cause I was starting, I was starting to feel weird. I, I hadn't been thrown up yet, but I was starting to feel funky. And then all of a sudden when it hit, it was like, holy crap. So we didn't get to go see uh, didn't go get to see us, but it did break. Uh, well, it didn't break, but it surpassed all of the box office uh, uh, estimates. I already read the spoilers. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Gosh, I hate it when you do that. Why? I she like, reads spoilers for everything because I really like to go into a movie understanding what I'm seeing. Mm, see, that takes all of the fun out of it. No, because then the fun becomes seeing that woven into the story and seeing the different areas and ways that uh the creators were able to pull that message out that's what makes it so deep if you don't catch the message which that's actually what i've heard from quite a few people is that they just didn't quite catch mm. what then it you was go see it a about. second time and then you watch it again and then you reanalyze it a second time we all have our methods <sighs> you have measured twice cut once that's some bullshit uh, I, i'm calling bullshit on that you and your you can't spoilers. call bullshit on my own personal I can. way of doing this. I can and I did. You can't, and I do. Because every time I try to introduce her to a movie, I can totally see she's already looking on the IMDb and like the Wikipedia and like reading yeah. the synopsis. And I'm like, I'm introducing this to you so that you have some element of surprise and like excitement about it. But she already knows all the like twists and turns. But the, time but the we, element we of surprise it. is not what I'm after. Ugh, I mean, whatever. it may be valuable whatever. to you, but that's not whatever, the value to whatever. me. You're not going to convince me. You're it's so wrong. one it's dimensional. Wrong. It's wrong. You're wrong. It's wrong. It's not right, <laughs> which means it's, it's wrong. It's just not right. Um, so, uh, gosh, yeah, that's a little bit of our catch up. I mean, that's pretty much what's been going on. There hasn't been anything. I mean, it's been exciting, but not exciting. I mean, mostly laying around in agony mm -hmm. uh, for most of this week. So mm -hmm. are you ready to get into our uh, 
to our fun little game show. Oh, I thought you were going to like introduce us and remind people to go to the web page oh, and man. like all that stuff. It's been too long. See, this is what happens when it's been a couple of weeks. I forget about these things. Yes. Uh, this is the sum of all fear podcast. If you, uh, if you've, like, been, who if you've been listening for the last, for the last 10 minutes, uh, to our ramblings, um, 14 minutes. Jeez. Wow. We've been rambling our puke stories. I didn't even get to get into mine that much. You got into yours. Way yours more. wasn't as Yours was way more exciting because you were on a plane. Yeah. Mine was just going back and forth from my bed to the bathroom. Yeah. my The rest of my story was tiny <laughs> compared to the plane portion. Yeah, so this is the Sum of All Fear podcast. We are on episode 11. Woo. Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, anglophobia. Anglophobia. The fear of the British. The fear of England. Of England. Uh, which which is should be interesting. Um, and all if things you, English. If you have been listening to us, we uh, again apologize that it's been a couple of weeks since we've had a, an episode. But go ahead and check out our uh, social media sites. Uh, check out Facebook. We're at Some of All Fear Podcast. At Twitter, we're at Some of All Fear Pod. And at Instagram, at Some of All Fear Pod. Um, you can also send us an email at Some of All Fear Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, and what else? Follow us. Uh, send us. Uh, 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 Rate us, right? That was that's what I was trying to get to. Yeah. Rate us, review us, um, on Apple, on iTunes, on um, on what is it? Switch? What are Stitcher? all the Stitcher? There we go. Stitcher, Google Podcasts. What else are we on? We're on a bunch of them. Any place that you're listening to us right now, um, please review us. Please rate us. It really is helpful. And with that, we are going to get into our game today, which is uh, which is called uh, What the Fear. What the fear? What the fear? <laughs> you say it now. What the fear? There you go. Okay, you have to say it like that. What the fear? What the fear? What the What is fear? happening right now? I don't know. I was singing. What, what's going on right now? That's the what the fear version of take on me. <laughs> don't. I Don't mm, ever do that again. I don't know. I Sorry. don't think so. <laughs> you can delete that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's definitely not going to happen. <laughs> Oh, hold on. I got a little kinkling I need to do here. A little kinkling? A little kinkling? Everybody says they can hear my glass my glass kinkling. Mm-hmm. It's part of what is reassuring and reaffirming. Which is a new word we made up. Kinkling. Yeah. <laughs> we got to up the energy here. Right. It's late in the afternoon. I tried to, and then you really shot me down and out of the air with my take on me right now. Oh, was that, your up and, was that your energy up? That was trying to be... With, with some aha? That was trying to be very uppity <laughs> with my aha. Aren't uh-huh. they British? Ooh, good question. I don't know. I would guess Australian, but I could be wrong. Ooh. They definitely could be British. Time for a fact. We'd have to we'd have to look that one up. But in the meantime, why don't we play some What the Fear? Let's do why it. Why not? Let's go. Let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, get into our favorite. Oh, I didn't even say our. I didn't even say our What the Fear intro line either. Uh, you're kind of off you know? your game. It's okay. I'm though. a little off my game today. You know, but it is time for everyone's phobia based trivia game. So everyone's you, uh, phobia based trivia. Everyone's favorite <laughs> phobia based trivia game. <laughs> this is what happens when I try to start a show without having a glass of whiskey first. Yeah, this is like a polished turd. No, oh, I know it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> not good at all. <laughs> you're just gonna have to bear with us this time, guys. Okay. This is this is just gonna be one of those episodes. It is where, what it where is. You're y'all. just gonna you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to bear with all of the uh, craziness. All right. All right. Let's play this. Let's play this game. So your first word is. Sinosilicophobia. Sinosilicophobia. Mm, can you spell that for me? C E N O S I L L I C A phobia. Sinosilicophobia. Was it with the, was it start with an S or C? C. C. Sinosilicophobia. And your hint is this is you whenever we're out at a bar. When I'm out at a bar? Yeah. Or at home. Or at home? Yes. Well, that's that's the only places that I am. I know. Good luck. Ever. I know. That's not a good hint. Have a good time. <laughs> what Is this the fear of... I mean, I, I did mention this week that FOMO was not a real phobia. So is, this, is this the fear of... Miss, this isn't the fear of missing out. No, it's not. 
Um, no, this would be because I have a little bit of that. This would be for sure when we're out somewhere at a bar, you would experience this uh, anxiety or phobic level anxiety. I would experience this. Mm-hmm. I don't have any phobic level anxieties. Ah, uh, this one's on the spectrum. Hmm. Uh, the the fear of running out of alcohol. <gasps> Ding! Did I really get it? Yes. <laughs> the fear of an empty beer glass or alcohol glass. <laughs> Great job! Well, since I don't really drink beer, uh, but. Wow, I got another one right. That's the second one of all time. Look at that. I am really proud See of you. See what happens. See what happens when I'm clear minded. When we have when <laughs> when I'm not fogged by by the devil spirits. Mm-hmm. You mean when you're sober? <laughs> it makes me sound like I'm a real drunk on here, but I, I'm really done. I'm not. I'm not that much of a drunk. Not not. I mean, I drink a little. Depends on who you're asking. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> and what their criteria. This podcast are. makes me sound. Like I'm a lush. You are kind of a lush, which is different than a drunk. Mm. Lush just means connoisseur of fine adult beverages. I'm pretty sure that's what the definition. <laughs> of a moderate. Is. So I got another one, right? Is that what you just you told did. me? Yeah. The fear of running out of alcohol, of like an empty glass. The fear of an empty glass. Yeah, I do have that. You know, my biggest problem is in social situations, I don't like to to have to not have something in my hand. Mm-hmm. And so I'll drink very quickly when yeah. I'm like, in, when I'm re- having to talk or like be around so, like a lot of people at a, and at a bar. And you don't or like, like at an restaurant. empty glass. And so, yeah, I, I do order, tend to order and make sure I have something there until I realize, oh crap, I've already drank, you know, three glasses. This is not helping your because alcoholic Because that's a, image. that's a, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's <laughs> definitely a, definitely something that I like to have. So you're right about that. There is mm-hmm. definitely a, a component of uh, of anxiety there, social anxiety that comes into play for sure. There is. So, wow, look at that. I, that's my second one I all the time. I'm really proud Woo-hoo, of you. That ought to up the energy. I know. You look so Pump peppy now. Yeah. I'm all right. Pepped. I'm pepped now. Look at that. You ready for a second one? I'm, I'm amazed. I you got that You can do one. this. Sinosilicophobia. 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 Or sinosilicophobia. All right. I'm going to get right. that tattooed on me next. Right. Right on your wrist so you can remind <laughs> yourself like, oh, yeah, this is why I do this. Mm. Um, okay. Your next one is hibernophobia. Hibernophobia. Now that I'm one for one, bat in a hundred. H-I-B-E-R-N-O-phobia. Bat in a bat in a phobia. Spell that again. H-I-B-E-R-N-O-phobia. Hibernophobia. Hibernophobia. Hmm. The fear of. You didn't even ask for your hint. Again. Oh, go ahead. Give me a hint. Um, these folks all would likely reside in Northern Ireland if they had to reside in Ireland. Oh, so is it somewhat related to our topic today? I don't know. No? A little bit. Oh, so are these people afraid of Catholics? No. Oh, are they afraid of. Hmm. I'm confused. Good. I was going to say something about sleeping because I hibernophobia. It sounds like hibernation, but I guess that's not correct. No, no. I've, I've, I've actually really realized that the roots of these are like, you can't, you can't break these down very well. No, no, not in the way that you do them. Though. Um, the fear of, I don't know. What is it? If these folks had to live in Ireland, they would want to live in Northern Ireland. Why? Um, because they are afraid of uh, the Catholic thing was the only thing I could think of. The fear. I mean, are they afraid of the Irish? Yes. But the Irish live in Northern Ireland as well. I know. <laughs> if they had to live if in Northern Ireland. they had to live you would, in you'd Ireland. You'd feel like they're more, I mean, a lot of Northern Irish just got really upset at you just now by well, basically inferring that the Irish don't live in Northern Ireland. I mean, that's that's kind of messed up. Well, my other original hint was they would hate St. Patty's Day, and I really didn't want you to get a second win that that easily. (laughs) So I was like... I could have gone way more directions. "Mm." But the Northern Irish are Irish as well. I know they are, but if someone with this fear had to live there, there's a lot of uh, British influence. There's more British influence in Northern Ireland. So maybe they would feel less fearful um, since there's that resistance. Okay. All right. Maybe it's unfounded comment. All right. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I can see it. <laughs> All right. And your last one is. Potnono. Mo, potnono. <laughs> Whoa. Say that again. Ah, 
Okay, I have to. Pot no no mo. Oh man, this pot, is good. This is pot good. no no micophobia. Pot no no micophobia. Say it faster. Pot no no micophobia. <laughs> pot no no micophobia. And how would you spell this wonderful word? P o t n o n o m i c a phobia. Good lord. That's ridiculous. Pot, no, I can't say it anymore. The people who make up these 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 names for these phobias, I know, are assholes. Most of them, I think. Um, what's my hint? I like your energy with that. I'm getting. Finally. I'm trying to get my hint uh, the first before I try to guess this time. Uh, these people would have really enjoyed Ireland um, between 1845 and 1849. Oh man, these people are afraid of potatoes. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's two out of three. I know. I made my hints really easy for those you. Those were this pretty. Time. Those were pretty easy. So, but those were pretty good. I, I like the energy. So, that's good job. Good. Two for three. Your first time. That's good. Actually, well I, I kind of got three for three because I did say of. the fear of the Irish the second time, but that yeah. was my second guess. Right. So great job, honey. Wow. I mean, look at that. You're doing that was, awesome. That was an impressive. I like the way that you tied in your phobias to to our your what the fear phobia is to our big phobia. Right. <laughs> so um with that, let's let's uh let's dig into this 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 fine phobia from across the pond. Anglophobia, the fear of the British. Hey, Chris. Hey, Drew. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Why, yes, I have. When we were trying to get this podcast off the ground, we had a lot of questions. Like, how do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen to? Um, how do we make money podcasting? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. Uh, in fact, that's what I'm doing right now just by reading this ad. Right now? Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now? That means if you want to get a podcast going and make money doing it, Go to anchor.fm slash start. Join me and Chris and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. We can't wait to hear your podcast. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plains. Ooh, I like your accent. I'm I'm trying to work on it. That's my that's my Anglophobia, my fair lady, Eliza You're Doolittle practicing. I like it. <laughs> um so Anglophobia. What's the root? Uh our de well, I so the definition I thought was interesting because it's not really like it is a fear. Right. But it actually is defined more as a as a strong dislike. Right. Or prejudice. More of a prejudice. Yeah, prejudice against England or Britain. An and, anti-British sentiment. Right. And, and I think you could probably plug in any nation into this. You could pl plug in any people group, right? I mean, that's the, these are these kind of ethnocentric phobias. Uh, but this one in particular is about is about our good friends over across across the pond, the, the Brits. And it comes from the uh, Latin Anglus, which uh, means English. Um, and to be fair. 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 The the British, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot like the U.S., uh, have done a lot of stuff to piss people off. Um, <laughs> Sometimes over, it's a warranted uh, prejudice. Yeah, over the years they've done some things to piss some people off, and and you know even and so it's not you know, always I, unfounded. When I when I was going through school, I you know, I studied European history and, and particularly European history from you know the fifteen fourteen hundreds onward, which was when Britain really came to power. You know they were. They really, at one point, the British Empire was the most powerful in the world and, and arguably still to this day, one of the most powerful empires of all time. Well, and that concept of royalty too uh, lends itself to this like higher air. This grandiose of, kind yeah. of feel. Yeah. But I mean, they had, they had, uh, uh, they had a, uh, a lot of things throughout history uh, starting very right. early on. Um 
you know, even we go back to the, you know, the Henry VIII times and the, and the Queen Elizabeth. And, and then as they started expanding out of, out, out of that and, um, and we see the persecutions of, of Ireland and we see these, you know, the Oliver, Oliver Cromwell stuff. And we see the, there's so many things in British history that were kind of blights, um, that were also, you know, also part of their lore. Some of mm-hmm. this very interesting kind of mythology that's centered around Britain. But then as we got into, you know, these later times, we see, we see this, this imperialism in the late 1600s. Yes, I love that word. Imperialism. 1700s, you know, this British imperialism, this, this real, this re- where they went in and really established. And lots of colony, uh, colonization. colonization, right? They went around and, and really forced themselves on these nations and nation building is what we call it now. Um, which did not make them super popular in the eyes of, of a lot of places in Africa and in India and in, in, you know, a a lot of places across the globe, they were not looked upon very favorably. Mm. And we wanted to do this kind of back to, to St. Patrick's day. That was kind of our idea was right because of the, the Irish British. There's a lot of anti, there's there's not a lot of sentiment in Ireland. You know, the Brit, the Brits and, 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 uh, you know, England forcing itself upon Ireland. Uh, and those who, who don't live in Northern Ireland, like you were saying before, there's, there's been this tension between, between, you know, those two groups. And we know, you know, the IRA and all of the things that went on, um, when I was growing up in the eighties, you know, eighties and, and early nineties, that was still a huge thing on the news every night. Like Clinton during the Clinton era, that was a, that was a thing that they brokered, you know, they brokered peace between, those parties and they, it was all kinds of stuff that was going on. And you still saw a lot of tension that date back dates back centuries. Oh, and it goes back to the four. I mean, it literally goes back to the 1400s. I mean, it's not even, it's, you know, it goes back many, 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 many centuries, you know, and so that sentiment goes and is handed down from generation to generation. Right. The beliefs about it are heard and ingrained into each generation um, that passes. And so that sentiment becomes this kind of intense prejudice or uh, phobia. Um, well, and even if you look at early American history and and, mm-hmm. and what happened with the colonizations, the colonies in, in the United States, there was a lot of I mean, we don't think about it now because we're allies with the British and we've always, right. we have this friendly thing, but you know, a few hundred years ago, you, you did not speak favorably of the British after the revolutionary war. You know, right. that was, you were, it was a very, we had, it was a very anti, anti-British sentiment going around the, uh, the U S as well. Um, so all of that history kind of combined, you know, gives a little bit of background to this, this, this phobia or this dislike of very the British around the world in various different ways. Right. So it's, it's, and it takes on different forms de- depending on where you're from or what your experience is or, or whatever. Right. right? Yeah. It, it's unlike other phobias because it's more of an isolated phobia that's triggered by um, let's say historical events um, or uh, isolated incidents with people uh, that maybe are passed down by um, behaviors uh through the generations, things like that. Sure. Um, it doesn't tend to be like a, a gene um, focused, like maybe agoraphobia um, was. So we're looking at a lot of um, pre- preconceived notions and beliefs that are passed down through generations on top of the fact that it might be also traumatically ingrained in those brains um, to think a specific way in order to survive. Um, excuse me, there's some research that has been done about, um, the relationship that the Irish have with the English and and the sentiment towards them on a very deep level and trying to understand it better. Um, in 2005, Glasgow researchers found out that a patient's condition improves when he deals with the frightening aspects of the country that that he's experiencing. Really? Uh, so it doesn't matter so if they're, if they're, if you're afraid of, of, uh, people from an Arab country, or if you're afraid of people from a, from, you know, wherever, you know, they found from, that from really Israel. educating yourself on that was the best way to reduce the anxiety it and makes the sense, tension right? associated with prejudice it, right? is prejudice is a learned behavior that you can, <clears throat> you can unlearn. Obviously right. we know that, you know, that's a thing. 
And we saw that amazing um, little documentary short on Sunday morning. Oh, on Sunday morning. morning. Yeah, on CBS um, Sunday morning. We love that show. We're, so, we're like old people. We're like – Oh, it's I like, love it. CBS Sunday morning, morning is such a great show. We sit there and just drink our coffee on Sunday morning. But um, this is a little tangent, but it has to do with that um, kind of phobic level uh, anxiety or fear that is transposed as hatred mm-hmm. um, of another society and what actually learning about that uh, – Society that culture, or culture, that culture can or, or religion do. or whatever it might right. be. Right. Uh, so this gentleman had had these preconceived notions that were passed down by his parents and maybe some personal experiences. And this gentleman on Sunday morning talked about how he had actually gone to such lengths as uh, to plan his attack to place bombs at, um, at a mosque, at an Islamic mosque. Right. Near and this his was house. a good old boy. This was like a kid who, yeah. a guy who had been raised, you know, I believe in the South. And he was, mm-hmm. he was, this um, is what he was taught. He was a military man that had been over in, 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 you know, a Marine. He probably in, in had Iraq. some bad experiences, bad experiences overseas you know? and, you know, experiencing these things and felt like it was his patriotic duty, right? Like yeah. to, you know, with, and with this whole thing in New Zealand, we, you know, this is all, it's very close to home right now. We weren't going to dig into this too much, but, but I think this really does illustrate that point that, you know, and, and so, so anyway, so he, he decided well, before he did, he was going to do this. He was going to go into this mosque and he was going to learn. That was what he well, said. He said, I, I'm, I'm going to go. He had said something out. around his daughter and his yeah. daughter gave him that look like, like, wow, he said something really hateful uh, around his daughter and his daughter gave him that look like, like, I don't what? understand like, that I don't, level I don't of get hate, hate you know? or that level of. Fear. And so it broke his heart and he realized, you know, hey, maybe I should try a different tactic yeah. first before I, you know, before I go annihilate these So he people. goes into the mosque and he starts to learn. Um, and the more he learns, the more he feels connected to it. And he becomes, I think he said a year later, he became a Muslim. Yeah. And now he's the president of that mosque. Of that mosque and one of the main um speakers of the mosque and representatives and his story is powerful and moving if you haven't seen it um but how that relates to this anglophobia is what we see of this pattern of behavior of this pattern of thinking and believing um is that it seems to stem from a really subconscious overprotected overprotective mechanism um and as with such can be rooted in really severe um unresolved emotional conflict right and that can that seems like it should it stems a lot from from kind of uh, I don't want to say traumatic experiences, but experiences where, for example, nine eleven mm-hmm. kind of kicked Second off a lot of that that is homophobia, right? Or or just yeah, just seeing that event happen. So if you were to in, if you were in else. Ireland under a lot of British oppression, or if you were in India, or if you were in any of these African countries or whatever under a lot of British oppression or British rule, where you saw things happen with their soldiers, with their whatever it might be that could could instant you know could could start this Absolutely. this thing in your in your life that could create a phobic level reaction um or you know just that that anxiety or fear reaction associated with anything that has to do with that particular culture um and what's really unfortunate is these are often guided by um isolated incidents or incidents that are very um narrow in terms of the broader spectrum of the population, um, or just really misguided feelings, um, and beliefs that may have been handed down by other people. Um, and so learning is, has been the best way to reduce that anxiety about, um, really what we're talking about here is that fear of losing control, right? Um, if we go look at the base of all of this, we're afraid of, of another culture or of another people. We're afraid of England because they're big and they're powerful and, um, they have influence and they could take us over and we could be forced to be something that we don't feel we are. Um, maybe we look down on it because of, you know, Th- cliched things that we see in British culture or, um, well, and, then, and, and again, it works for all of these cultures, right? You know, exactly. It does, it's not just British. It's that, that just happens to be what we're talking about right. is, is this ang- is Anglophobia, but, but it's literally, that is what stems from all of our cultural miss, miss, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, cultural, um, uh, prejudices, uh, racial prejudices, all of those things come about from this fear, um, this undergirding fear that, that, that tends to be, you know, passed on from generation to generation, not always 
it can definitely be a learned behavior too, or a sure. learned thing that or you end up or, or, or you end up just developing because of an experience or developing right. because somebody from that culture did something to you or did something to your family or did something to your culture or right. whatever it might be. And just as with any phobia, where it becomes problematic, um, where you should seek some real guidance is when you feel like you might injure yourself or other people because of this thought or this belief. Um, you know, not that they're going to tell you that you're wrong for what you believe, but the level of that reaction really indicates that something emotionally charged is going on and it must be important because it's important enough for that person to consider injuring someone else over yeah, it. Sure. So let's address it in a way that takes that aspect out of it, but still validates what's going on for that person. Right. Cause it's a misguided action. Sure. Um, as are, so, as are all of, yeah, as, as are any of these kinds of kinds of, racially right. or ethnically motivated kind of fears or, you know, right. when you get to, and, and a lot of it is once you, once you are uh, uh, surrounded by those cultures or, or get, spend time getting to know them or getting to know them better, those things kind of melt away. And there, there's definitely a way to, to get yourself uh, to get beyond these kinds of prejudices or these kinds of, of phobias or whatever you want to call notions. them, preconceived notions. Um, because it's weird calling it a phobia because it's not really, it's not, it's not really not normally, a phobia, but that's the normally, vernacular. Right. And we felt like it was really important, um, considering today's climate to just address it in terms of what is behind it emotionally, possibly, um, what can we do about it? Um, and also we started to explore on the back end, uh, the opposite, uh, spectrum of a phobia. Well, is there anything right? else about, so hold on before we get into that, cause I am interested in that in, oh, in where you're going with this, but I do want to, to. Is there anything specific about anglophobia? I know we're, we're we're kind of diverting into this, going where exactly where I said we weren't going to go, which was getting deep into the the ethnic. Uh, it's important to know, acknowledge. The, absolutely, it is, and and honestly, like right now, especially in the in the United States, where we have well around the around all of the Western world, we have this white nationalism stuff going on, and we have the Islamophobia going on, and then and then you know you go across the world and you go to to some of these Arab countries and you have you have crazy uh, genocides going on of, of different religions and different nationalities. And it's a major issue across, across the globe. And, and I don't want to take that lightly. I wasn't trying no. to, to try to steer away from that. It's, it's a major, major issue. Um, and you know, the and we're far, not going to solve it on this podcast. No, we're not going to solve it on this <laughs> podcast for sure. Like there's no doubt about it. Um, but I think anything that breeds hate or violence is, is a problem. You know, I think anytime you have, you have the far right side, calling for violence um, that's ethnocentric and you have the far left side calling for violence to, to solve and combat that you have a problem. Like, when we're at the point of injuring self or others over, there's a problem. Over, um, an idea or a belief. That's something that's valid and needs to be addressed. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not good. And, um, and you know, um, this goes back to, you know, I think it goes back to what we always talk about our, our moderation views, you know, we, oh, middle we're of big the road. on, on, on the Via Medea, the middle road is what we've always, we, we've always talked about writing a book about it because I need to get a tattoo of that. Because right. It, I mean, it's something I have to constantly remind myself. Moderation, of. man, moderation, Finding politics, moderation in, in kind of in everything, in everything in life is, 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 is important. You know, your, your ideology is moderation is, is really important. And it's something that we need to find, uh, in the United States again, for sure. Right. But um, with regards to like Anglophobia specifically, this is something that we've seen, uh, gosh, like you said, for centuries in history, this, um, fear, hate, um, disdain, disgust, you know, all of these real base reactions against a specific, group or nation. So against the British who were powerful, who held a lot of influence, who continue to hold a lot of influence, um, you know, and for countries like Ireland specifically, um, who were, you know, <laughs> just, they had a lot, they were rife with, um, there was a lot of fuel. heads. There's a lot of, there was a lot of fuel for, them, for that fire. Absolutely. Right? So researchers went in, um, and, they and still is, I mean, it's not oh, over gosh, yet. I mean, no, it's, it's, not it's still over ongoing. Yet. In fact, it's, it's kind of ramped up in the last couple of years yeah. again. Um, George Orwell even said, um, Welsh, Irish, and Scottish nationalism have points of difference, but are alike in their anti-English orientation. So it's not something that's... Yeah, the Scots, the, the Welsh, and the uh, and, and the Irish may not all get along 
but they definitely unite on the fact that they all yep. they all dislike the British. Yeah, and in a <laughs> or just like the English, I should say. In a 2017 survey, um, half of the Brits living in Scotland said they'd been harassed or discriminated against by Scottish people. Oh, that's funny. 2017. Wow. So we're talking real heavy nationalism. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's still, um, it's still a very, very strong. big deal. Um, you know, it's a very it's yeah it has wide ranging implications um yeah it, the other research that i wanted to mention was that um 700 irish were polled um as to why what's what's the root of what they hate and i talked earlier about how um that hate often comes from um cliched ideas of uh the culture or a or a over generalizing of sure uh, people Which we always nation. love to do, right? right? That's where all the stereotypes come from. Right. I love the song. This is a little tangent. I love the song on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend called Let's Generalize About Men. <laughs> um, and it's it's all this topic. It's just generalization about men after generalization. Um, and that's kind of what we see in this research is um, the generalization of this hatred, which includes a real disdain for soccer hooliganism, <laughs> which... I get it's a it's a British thing, but it's also a Spanish uh, it's thing. It's an Irish thing and, and an Italian thing. An Irish thing, thing and, and an Italian a thing. Lithuanian thing. It's it's every potato and tomato piece of Europe thing. So yeah. you know, that's that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it's it's and not that, it's not that's kind of like it's a, not uh, it's not distinctive of does of, not uh, of compute, England. you know. Although um, they may they may uh they may take it a little, little more hardcore. I know. Right. They definitely, uh, they definitely like their brawls. I don't their, know. I've seen the riots. Me- I've seen the Mexican riots where they like, well, yeah. the and quarter South, people. That's South America. Oh, is yeah. it? I'm sorry. Yeah. I think that was in, uh, yeah, that was in somewhere in the, in the uh, Amazon, but yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty gnarly everywhere. They also hate Brexit. Um, that was one of the things 44% said that they, uh, they hate the British because of Brexit. Oh, really? Um, and, um, the other highest uh, rating was arrogance. They perceive the British as generally an arrogant people. Well, and that's the thing. So that was something else I was going to mention is, is uh, you know, and again, to be fair. 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 Um, the, the British have always had this little air about them too that we that, that has always been easy to to uh to to make fun of hey, and to I never uh, and to, said and to get pissy that, about that some of these weren't valid because some of them are it's just the reaction yeah to the pretentiousness it. the British pretentiousness is a real thing so there's no doubt about that there's definitely a um you know but again that's the stereotype that's but it's the, also you know, and I spent a lot of time I've spent, not a lot of time but I've spent some time in England yeah and, you spent time backpacking through Europe while listening to Coldplay shut up Coldplay was popular. <laughs> Second most pretentious thing you've ever said. Um, and actually, the uh, the lead singer of Coldplay, whatever his name is, is uh, he's an extra in the movie in our movie. Today, oh, that's fun! Just so you know. Oh, fun fact. There you go. Fun fact. That's another Easter um, egg for you. Chris, what's his name? Something. What is that guy's name? I don't know. You're I asking me remember. a name. That's wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, when I was there, I mean, there's definitely that. There's there's just like anywhere else, you know, like some of those stereotypes absolutely ring true. And right. some of them are you're like, way oh, they're, not way off. they're just expanded. You know, they're just, they're just are what they are. You know, right. they're, there's a little bit of truth mixed into every, every stereotype. And that's why, right. that's why I think, uh, you know, we're in a culture, especially in the United States where we just overreact to every little thing right. that's mentioned about any culture or about anything, which is just ridiculous, you know, and, instead of just taking them as they are and, kind of talking through them and trying to figure out where oh. the root of these things come from, laugh about it and move on. You but know? we're kind of stuck in survival mode. Um, and this is my opinion. We're kind of all stuck in survival mode. Um, fear of an ever changing environment that we don't have any sort of control over uh, in terms of our national security, maybe and national. Yeah. I think we're also in a global world where we're in a things global are changing world so now. quickly. There's so we much here so much, um, from other sides of the world all the time that we're actually connected and we, we feel their instability too. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Actually. So yeah, some of this, um, some of this, uh, you know, anglophobia or just phobic nationalism in general um could be a, a projection of our insecurities absolutely you know oh it for sure if is. you really want to whittle down how larger um globalization might feel in terms of um like 
the colonization effect and the colonization fear. Think about what it was like when um, – did you ever have a girlfriend who kind of slowly started moving all of her shit in and then was kind of moved in and then you noticed she was kind of changing things around or anything like that? No, I just married him. You just married him? Yeah. That's right. I should know that. <laughs> well, okay. So <laughs> hearken back to a time when you were married uh, the first time then and – um Think about how you guys went through the process. Of, I understand the concept you're trying to get at right. here. The concept is that slow move, that slowly right. kind of taking over right. your space. Someone moves into someone that, else's house, right? You have that fear of, right? like, of like, oh shit, somebody is, right. somebody's, oh, this is really encroaching on right. my, even if it's on my territory. Even if it's voluntary, um, if someone moves all of their belongings into what I have kind of subconsciously considered my space um, and then begins to change things or add things to my space that causes a natural anxiety um of colonization yeah that's that's what it's, it's called. that's on a micro level very much the same thing I yeah see, that's a that's a really great analogy yeah and so that's a primitive survival mechanism right um, now sometimes sometimes it's not a slow gradual moving in sometimes it's i'm breaking down your door and i'm going to right exactly i'm not going to to just leave my toothbrush here but i'm going to but that's the point is I'm going that, to re, I'm going to stick you over in the corner and I'm taking over the rest of the house. Right. And that's so that's point. British imperial. That's well, that's that imperialism in general. It's imperialism in right? general and colonization in a nutshell. Um, and that may be what some of these nations that experience that real deep anglophobia um may be projecting that insecurity of you're gonna leave your toothbrush and then the next thing you know, you're moving your fucking couch here. Yeah. You know. And you're well, staying. And again, and, and then your mom's and we might also, over. And we might also stick stick you in a cage over right. in the corner and, and, and we're you just might taking be in the over basement. your whole house. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, that's which I mean, if you look at like US, you know, US and, and Native American relations, you look at like the way it's right. So, some so of that we stuff see is, a lot of crossover, you know, but I mean, even on just a one-on-one basis, we can see this in our everyday interactions. So imagine that on a, a billion people level and imagine that kind of anxiety. Yeah. Pulling that forcefulness of this belief system. Um and causing um uh tunnel vision where you you could you can't see that culture in any other way no you just and, you just and see them you, as those you just see yeah. them as those military people who you, came just, in, you just see, see them as you couldn't all go into the facts that you, you want to see that can conf, confirmation bias that you sure. that make your belief true and everything else doesn't really matter it's kind of fuzzy and, and that's what we do a lot of times we see them just as their government or just right. as their their most extreme as pe- we see people in their cultures as just their most extreme uh, properties, right. the most extreme people that come out of their, those cultures, instead of seeing them as those, the those the families, whole. the small people, the, the people that live back home that are that aren't interested in messing up your your life or your no. family or your culture. And so when you know they just see them as as imperialistic rulers, when when that's not the entire people group, that's just a segment, or that's, that's just the government, or that's just this, right? And so, and I think that's a lot of the the benefit of kind of look standing back and looking at, at these things in a broader and, and talking about them like this, right. Is, mm-hmm. is kind of, you know, under coming to that understanding that, that we need to see these, these types of things in a much more, um, uh, psychosocial way. Yeah. in a more social. Yes. I don't know. I can't even think of what I'm trying to say, but you know, you're, we just you're have to take it. we have to take the sociology um, into account as well as the biology and the um, sure you know just anthropology and you know how groups interact and blah 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 blah. So we we have we talked about um, we want to kind of start instituting something a little bit different, right? Um, into these phobias, we want to start talking about not just the phobias, but also the philias. Right. So the other right? side of it, the so exact phobias are the opposite. fear or the fear of something and philias are the obsession with the, the intense affection, atten- for. intense affection for. So I thought that'd be kind of fun, right? We, we can, we, we're not just going to talk about the people who are totally afraid of these things. We also want to talk briefly about like, about some of these things from the other perspective, people who are obsessed with, which, which I think is kind of funny with anglophobia because there's definitely anglophiles out there. There are so many anglophiles. I mean, think about Madonna who went to London and then suddenly had a British accent for like three years. Yeah. That was an episode of how I met your mother too. Right. Or Lily, Lily started talking in a, in a cockney accent um, for, for <laughs> until they had an intervention. 
Right. And so the, the philia, anglophilia, um, or an anglophile, uh, as they would be called, have this intense obsession or love for all things, uh, English. Um, so we've got the anglophobes who hate them. And then we've got the anglophiles who love them on the other side. And, and are just this, obsessed with them. And they're just, and obsessed there's so much, and there's so much them. British, like, especially in the United States, I think there's so much British television and British uh, movies and, you know, so many different things that could kind of spur that on. I would think music. I mean, think about the, the punk rock movement, yeah. the punk, you know, punks in the seventies, um, with the sex pistols and with the, you know, with, yeah. with all that stuff with the clash, um, music, culture, Dr. Who, Harry Potter, Elton John, Adele. I said the sex um, pistols. Sex pistols weren't British, were they? they yeah, were, they were. Weren't they New York? Um, oh, no, they were, they were sex pistols. Oh, they were British. They were sex pistols. The clash. The was kinks. Definitely. Um, you know, there's a big um, romanticized view of British culture. You know, we think of the cliches that we talked about earlier with the phobias. Now let's turn that around and get super fucking obsessed with them and talk about how um, the Great British Baking Show is amazing and what happened on Downtown Abbey. And, oh, yeah. There's all those shows. Um, you know, the fondness for um, the English class system, uh, English spelling and pronunciation. Um, even if you're not a part of that culture, there couldn't be an intense fondness for all things uh, English. What and about the royal? I mean, the royal wedding. The I royal mean, family. Think, think about the royal family. And the oh royal my God. Did you see how many people, people? get so obsessed with that shit. People throw royal family parties in America. And so that just shows you that you don't have to be a member of that nation to become obsessed or very, very fond of a specific, uh, nation or group. Um, you know, the union Jack obsession was huge. Um, let's talk about the tiche of tea and crumpets or the, the cliche. They said tiche. Tiche. Is that a word? We made it the one. Tiche. Tiche. Is that a British? That's is that a, a, is that a British cliche? Is a tiche? The tiche. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, it's not really a cliche though. I mean, they really do thing. love their fucking tea. It's a thing. Um, but also there are uh, Anglophiles who will go on British vacations and seek to specifically do, you know, the fox hunting. And um, they consider Britain really is just London only. They don't know the totality of the people. They just know this like one sector. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that you know, that transition from philia to phobia, um, isn't, isn't far off. You can hate something and then quickly come to love it. Um, like we saw with the, um, Islamic president that we talked about earlier, um, of that mosque. Yeah, so it happens. it's really interesting. There are also several anglophilia podcast. Um, and really when we think about the anglophilia, um, Meghan Markle really renewed the wetness in the panties of every American Anglophile, I think. <laughs> they all want to be the princess. The princess. Yeah, I like it. Princess royalty. Hmm. Pip, pip. Wait, what did you just say about Meghan Markle's wet panties? Uh, I said that Meghan Markle really renewed the wetness in the panties of every American Anglophile. <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be one of your quotable your quotable quotes from this podcast. No right way. There. That's awesome. It took me a little bit to think of that one. I've but. got a little bit of that. I've got a little bit of an yeah. obsession with the with 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 British culture and British definitely British history. Like right. I've always been obsessed with British history. And I love I love the 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 way in which British history has kind of has kind of defined Western culture too. Right. I mean, like there's so much there. It's really interesting. It's fascinating to see how how they became such a superpower, you know, and and really uh there's a lot to admire. Oh, it's it's I mean it's it's I mean admire I don't know about admire, but it's just interesting. It's just it's always fascinated me, um, you know, their influence on the world. And and I think right. You know, you look at whether it's the British influence on the United States and and United States influence on the world now. We look at everything in a vacuum because we live mm -hmm. in a certain period of time. You know, if you lived in the 1600s, you would view the world very differently. Oh, yeah. If you lived in the 1800s, you would view the world very differently. We view our world through our own stupid ass lenses <laughs> of where we are right now. And so everybody who thinks that you have a major cause that is just the most important thing in the entire fucking world, you're wrong because you live in a very small speck of time in the universe. Um, but I always think it's fascinating when you look at cultures through their historical lenses. You know, I've always, 
I, that's my thing. History is my thing. So I really enjoy kind of analyzing these things through those, those lenses. And I do have a, a kind of a fascination with, with Britain as I do a, a lot of other cultures too. Um, but British culture is really interesting and I could definitely see why people become Anglophiles. It's definitely a fascinating history. Well, I have to holla out to my best girl, Eat Schmidt, because she and I have our favorite movie, Love Actually. Which That's right. Is a, a definitive British impact. Love Actually is your favorite is your favorite Christmas movie. Christmas movie every yeah. year. Every year you have to watch. Yeah, it's sappy. I I I enjoy it. It's you fun. proposed to me with the slideshow from there. Oh, that's right. I did, didn't I? You did. Damn, I'm good. You are so good. That's why I said yes. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's only. That's the only reason. Yeah, that's it. That's the only reason. Uh, can you think of another? Now you're regretting. Now you're regretting that decision. Ah, shame. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So anglophobia and a little bit of anglophilia. Yeah. Mixed in there. Ang- anglophobia and philia. So I gotta say, I don't have any. Um, I don't have any honorable mentions today. Not this time. We're just gonna do. Uh, we're just gonna do one main movie because it's the best movie. It is. I um, love it. But I, I could have dove into a ton of British stuff. I mean, there's so much stuff. Hellraiser is, a, is British. American Werewolf in London. Twenty eight days later. American Werewolf in London would have been an interesting one. Yeah. But why did we choose this one? Um, don't look now is another one that would have been really good. Um, all of the Hammer horror films. Um, which were all the Christopher Lee, like Dracula's and you know, all that stuff. Those, those are, have a huge place in like horror history and stuff. Um, but you know, I think we need to get a little more fun, a little more lighthearted, um, for this one. So we picked this week, one of my favorites, and one of your mine. favorites. You actually really enjoy this one, which is good. I always like that. I love this. One I always like so it when, when much. we have a, we have a movie that, you know, a horror movie. That it tickles me pink. It's, 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 it's a great one. Um, so we're going to talk. The 2004 British zombie comedy. Ooh, Anglophobes beware. Shaun of the Dead for our feature presentation. And now our feature presentation. That's like your favorite line in this entire movie, isn't it? The whole thing. And it's not even really a line. No, no, I just kind of Mrs. Doubtfired it myself. And it's not Mrs. Doubtfired in the movie. No. When I rewatched it, like I always think in my head, it's it's, it's supposed to be like, supposed to be like, hello, pickle, like full on Robin Williams, like, but it's it's not. She's very, she's very subdued. She's like, hello, pickle. So it's much more like that. Very proper, very British. Much less, yeah, much less, uh, (laughs) much less Robin Williams. I prefer the Mrs. Doubtfire version. Hello, pickle. That's much more um, like suffocating momish. Which is which is uh, uh, actually what Edgar Wright's mom actually called him growing up. Pickle. Pickle. Oh, yeah. that's where he got that from. So it was direct. And this was Shaun of the Dead is our movie this week. Do you um, think that he got called Pickle because Gherkin was too much of a mouthful? Ger- 
Hello, Gherkin. Gherkin. I don't think that works as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hello, Cornishin. Hello, Cornishin. I don't think those work. No? No. Hello, <laughs> Cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> no pickle definitely sounds best pickle pickles a good one yeah no uh yeah so the director uh, uh, edgar wright um that was his actual nickname that pickle. his mom gave him when he was a kid that's why that uh ended gherkin. Up in the movie. yeah not gherkin gherkin not cornichon 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 cornichon, cornichon. cornichon. it sounds like his no. nickname was cornish hen cornish hen cornish hen <laughs> you're my little cornish oh hen. my little cornish hen <laughs> that'd be a very pretentious nickname i think i would my little gray poupon. Oh, man. Shaun of the Dead, 2004, directed by Edgar Wright. Such starring, a favorite of everyone. Starring Simon Pegg, mm -hmm. who co-wrote, um, is one of my freaking favorite horror movies. Horror comedy. It's definitely my favorite. I think it's my favorite horror comedy movie. Um, for it's, sure. I've definitely watched it more than any other one. That's for damn sure. Um, I love it. It's called a Zomcom. Zomcom? Zomcom. Is that, is that what it's called? Zombie comedy? Zomcom. Zom, zombie comedy. And it was way ahead of its time, really. I mean, these, It might even be a Zom rom-com. <laughs> it is kind of a Zom rom-com. But it's not a Zom <sighs> prom rom-com. It's a Zom mom rom-com. It is a Zom mom rom-com. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just... Wow. Zom mom rom-com. Mind blown right now. <laughs> yeah, earlier I couldn't say... Pot no 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 nomophobia. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody now, can say that. And now Nobody can say that because people who come up with phobia names are assholes. We decided that's the reason. We did. Yeah. They just yeah. like to they just like to make fun of people trying to pronounce the names. I mean, I don't blame them, do you? No, I mean that it's sounds pretty like entertaining. Fun. But so is a zombie mom rom com. Zombie mom rom com. Zom mom. Zombie mom prom rom com. No, there's no prom. There's no but prom it could be. Well, you could. I mean, they'd have to add another scene could it be a zombie mom dom rom-com Ooh, dirty Ooh, that sounds sexy Ooh, behave yeah that's the uh, porn version <laughs> sean of my butt which, which i'm sure that's there somewhere <laughs> sean of the of the bed sean of the bed oh my god so good good job <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> we're gonna make that first that was dong of the bed but dong that doesn't of work the as bed. well <laughs> i like I like the implications of Sean of the bed. Sean like, of the bed. It's very, I don't know. I just like it better. So Sean of the dead is a great movie. Has anybody not seen that movie? I, I, I yeah, I, I'll give a quick synopsis. I'm not going to break it down too much because you guys have all seen it. This is, this movie has been around for a long time. And if you haven't seen it, I mean, you, you've got it. You've, I mean, do you it. You need to go do it right do now. Do it now. Um, Drop what you're doing. Because it's fantastic. Are you a heart surgeon listening? Drop yeah. what you're doing. Go watch it. It's Shaun literally of one of the Start to finish, it probably is one of the most well-crafted movies that like has so many references upon references mm. and things that you don't even realize are like an Easter egg are like and foreshadowing and and stuff in the background. Name nothing dropping. nothing in this movie, nothing Edgar Wright put in this movie or, or him and Simon Pegg was on accident. No, it was very intentional. Like, everything was intentional. And that's like, what makes everything it so in the brilliant. background, everything in the foreground. The every, names. Everything. Names of the of, you know, it's it's so good that way. And I love movies like that that have so much. Uh, that that they just put so much thought into every single scene. It's it's just so great. But basically, it stars it stars uh, Simon Pegg as Sean, uh, who lives in a in a in a London flat with his with his his business you know successful roommate and then his slovenly roommate Ed. Um, and he's kind of a he's supposed to be I think he's supposed to be twenty nine. I've always kind of pictured him as in his mid thirties, but. Apparently not. Apparently he's supposed to be in his late twenties, but um would you like yeah. to talk about how I'm projecting you're onto projecting Sean. and personalizing? Yeah. And and Sean, you know, just you, getting his life together. Can you tell me more about how you feel like you are just now getting your life together? Or maybe don't have a handle on getting your I life think, together? I think I think I started I started moving that direction in my early thirties. I think I'm starting I'm, I'm on I'm on a ten year plan right now. I'm in about year five. <gasps> and I'm doing good. Whoa, you're halfway there. Right. <laughs> I thought you were gonna sing something, but you just no. said it right. No, I didn't. I wasn't gonna sing anything. <laughs> Nothing at all. Oh, I just wanted to let your. I just wanted to let your 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 uh, your Bon Jovi float out into the universe. Oh man, thanks for letting me <laughs> for do the that. world to enjoy. 
Um, but basically, you know, Sean's living this like kind of immature life. He's working at a shitty job. Would you say that he's living on a prayer? No, no, <laughs> no? he's living a shitty, he's, he's living a shitty life. Uh, you know, working at this electronic store and his girls, you know, his girl is, it, it breaks up with him because he can't get his shit together. That bitch. And, uh, you know, he's hanging out with his, with his, his immature, you know, Slovenly oafish roommate. roommate. Um, and you know, he kind of has the same routine every day. We have this, you know, there's this theme in the movie where everybody's just kind of walking through life and you see all the people and Sean Nobody's just kind of really living. They're no, all Sean just, just kind of the walking yeah, dead. The walking, there are kind of the, that's the whole theme, right? The, the, they're kind of zombies before they're zombies. And, and so Sean ends up, you know, so hanging out at the, at the Winchester bar all the time. And, you know, every morning he goes to the liquor store and gets his normal, you know, hangover cures and his whatever. And, you know, just kind of walks through life, not noticing what's going on around him. And, then Liz breaks up with him, his girlfriend, and he goes in and, and him and Ed get drunk at, at the Winchester bar, which is his, you know, his hangout. And then the zombie apocalypse happens around them. And, and they don't even so realize so hungover. It. Yeah, they don't even he realize. They, you no, know, it happens realize. the night. I mean, it's happening that day. It's right. happening the day that he because, breaks up. Because it happens it's, it's a at, process, right? at the Winchester that night. That night, when they're at the Winchester, there's yeah, there's there's zombies. And when they're going home, there's a zombie walking down the street, you know, and they don't even but, realize But I mean, it. honestly, we've all seen Reno around 3, 4, 5 in the morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It looks like the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, Reno, so. 4th Street in, in Reno. Uh, last night, we were at uh, we were at. That dinner. was like 8 p.m. Whew. too. Yeah, it was like 8 in the Holy afternoon. Holy smokes. And it was it was zombie time all over the place. Yeah, it was. Meth is a really terrible drug, people. It's, it really it's ruins bad. lives. Yeah, not good. Um. So anyway, so then he wakes up the next morning, and he is hungover, goes to the liquor store just like normal, and the world around him is already an apocalypse and he doesn't even see it. And you can see some of the clues, but he is just so inwardly focused. And so in himself, in whatever he's experiencing, that he honestly is not processing the world around him. Well, he's also extremely hungover, passed well, out in his kitchen. We've all been there. So he goes to get his, uh, he goes to the store to get his, uh, his Cornetto for, for Ed, which is a little ice cream. That... He didn't go get a cornichon? No, no cornichon. No, he gets his Cornetto ice cream, which which uh, I didn't realize this, but I guess there's a trilogy, the trilogy of movies with Hot Fuzz and uh, The World Ends or, or whatever that movie is um, that are also Simon Pegg, mm -hmm. Edgar Wright movies. That's called the Cornetto series or like trilogy um, because Cornetto, I guess, was Simon Pegg's like hangover cure in real life. Um, and so they, they they put those in all three of those movies and that became like the the little Easter egg deal. Well, crikey, that's fun. Yeah. Crikey is Australian. I think. Well, I mean, they were British. Yeah. Were they the? Were they the? <laughs> what um, they were? Weren't they British prisoners? Uh. Well, yes. Yes, they were. So I'm not wrong. I mean, they're still Australian. I'm just loosely wrong. <laughs> couple couple <laughs> centuries wrong. I'm a couple centuries off. Whatever. I have um, an old soul. So so then so then they end up you know they end up going to they go get his mom and then we we. There's the mom part of the Zomrom the hello, mom com. The hello pickle. Hello pickle. Hello. Hello pickle. Um, and they get the girlfriend. They get the the pretentious Robin Williams, friends. by the way, did a little bit more like hello. He had like a little <laughs> inflection. Anyways, go. Hmm. So they end up going back to the Winchester. To you know, they they make their way through the neighborhoods, fighting off zombies. Go back to Winchester. You know. In the end, the him, the only ones that end up surviving or spoiler alert are are him and Liz. And and they get rescued in the end. And it's all good. And we have this this great Sean basically goes from being this this kind of uh you know guy who had, doesn't have a shit together to being like the, the hero. Kind of the hero that that kind of you know learns to be a man, right? In this, he develops in this movie, very rapidly through the in movie. this movie. So we most of us have seen it. Not going to break it down any more than that. But, but this movie has so many amazing Easter eggs. I've watched this movie like a dozen times. I did not know how many amazing little Easter eggs. A few of them I had, I had found, I had kind of, I had picked out in the past. But man, there are so many freaking awesome little Easter eggs in this movie. Tell us more. Tell us more. Yeah, I will. Right now. Right now. Right now. As I pull up my notes. Right now. Uh, full cheese is the name of the restaurant that he does not get a reservation for, for Liz that he's supposed to get. Oh. He's supposed to get a reservation at, at Fulci's restaurant, which is an homage to Lucio Fulci, the godfather of gore. Oh, what an Italian director. 
um, who did City of the Living Dead and The Beyond, which are two awesome, gory, fun, Italian. um, Zombs. There's zombie stuff in them, yeah. City of the Living Dead, for sure. Um, The Beyond has, I guess those are zombies too. Demons, zombies, yeah. Um, when they go to, when they, when they call, uh, call his mum, his mum. Yeah. And they're going to go pick her up. Um, she's fighting, she's fighting that no, they, they don't want to leave. I, oh, we're no. fine. We'll just be fine here. You know, no, we're fine. No, and, don't uh, go and get Ed, us. Ed, Ed finally says, we're coming to get you, Barbara. <laughs> we're coming to get you, Barbara. They're coming to get you, Barbara. They're coming to get you, Barbara. <laughs> so a great night of the living dead reference, which that is, is awesome. That's pretty good. Um, well placed. Oh, oh. This so we picked this to be our to be our Anglophobia movie just because it was fun and I just wanted to find a cool fun British movie um, when this one's my favorite. And um, if you're an Anglophobic, you probably wouldn't watch it. And if you're an Anglophilic, you would absolutely love this movie. You would, and you, you would have loved it more. Be Anglophilic because of this movie. You would have loved it more had it been titled the original <laughs> title that they oh, came man. up with. Okay. It wasn't originally titled Shaun of the Dead. The original working title was Tea Time for the Dead. Oh. Tea Time of the Dead. Sorry. Tea Time of the Dead. Oh, can you imagine that byline? The most British of it's all. It's Tea Time, cunts. <laughs> you can't say that. That's the C word. I know, but oh, wait. The, the British, British say it all really the time. really enjoy saying that. They do. They do. They say it all the time. Mm-hmm. That's like their dude. Like, dude. Yeah, except for way worse. Well, depending on where you are. <laughs> you love that word. I do not. You do too. I never use it. Sure you do. Except for when I need to. When, when would you need to? When they deserve it. When do they deserve it? When they're cunts. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Don't be one and I won't call <laughs> that you That makes one. sense. I, I, hey, an appropriately placed C word, you know. I don't throw thing. it around freely. It's not a bad thing. Mm-mm. No, it's a well-placed grenade. But tea time of the dead is about the British of the most British of all horror. Movie I love names, it. I kind of wish that ever. would have actually happened. Yeah. Me too. I'm kind of sad. How would that translate? But it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been as an homage to Dawn of the dead. So that's, tea time of the bed would be the porn version. Tea time of the bed. <laughs> Instead of Sean of the bed. That, uh, that tea time of the bed would be the most boring <laughs> of all British porn movies. It'd be like watching, It'd be like uh, Danton Abbey, yeah, but with like, but just the but tea just, time, but just like old British people, like. Does it come in with like smell a vision so you ooh, can smell the eighteen no. hundreds while you're no, watching? Thank you. I don't know. Someone's probably into it. Um, another fun Easter egg: a lot of the zombies that are seen in the beginning, you know, the Mary that's in the front, mm. in, the, in the first that one they interact with, her... that gets the hole in her belly, yeah, um, and like the the big dude and a bunch of other people, they're all seen in the opening credits uh, doing, you know, whatever their jobs are, like waiting Very in line. Very menial or, zombie Yeah, like Mary works at the checkout at the grocery store. Huh. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool little little deal too. Sean works at 4 Electric, um, the electric company, electronics company that he works at. Um, and that's a play on actor Ken Foree, uh, uh, F-O-R-E-E, uh, played Peter in, in – uh, George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Oh. So I thought that was kind of fun too. That is fun. Yeah. Little and that that's what I mean. Like every little thing, like anytime they zoom in on something like a name tag or whatever, like look at everything because there are there's the so devil many, is in the details. So many little details. Like I love that. I love when directors put that much kind of effort and writers put that much kind of effort into into doing this kind of stuff. Um there's a reference to 28 days later. Um which was a 2002 British zombie film. So this came out two years before this movie came out uh, at the end of the movie. When the news, there's a news report that runs through and it says, it says claims the epidemic was due to rage infected monkeys have now been dismissed. Mm-hmm. So, and that was the plot line of not of, uh, monkeys 28 days later and 28 days later. I always thought was kind of pretentious because the director was like, it's not a zombie movie, you know, not it's a zombie. an epidemic. Movie. It's an epidemic movie. And I'm like, you know what? If you got, you know, Dude, that's like six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Yeah. Like, if you've got if you got something that's spreading, do to humans, people turn into something different that kills other people? Yeah. <gasps> then yeah, they're zombies. If they they may be zombified. Whatever. I don't. I, I think you're splitting hairs there, bud. Yeah. Don't call it on technicality. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, Figure it out. Silly. Pretty silly. Figure it out. A uh, couple of Evil Dead references in the movie, which I love. Yeah, uh, there's a employee named Ash that calls in sick to the electronics store. Oh, my heart, which is kind of a similar to a, a Nesmart type store. You Bruce know? Campbell, you Maybe. are my heart. 
um, at the end of when the, the roommate is in the uh, bathroom and Sean busts in and he's trying to like, and finds out he's a zombie. Yeah. And as he's backing out of the room, he says, if you want to come uh, join us and then leaves, join us. which was uh, yeah, with the deadites, the, the join evil dead deadites. So. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff like that in this movie. So good. I love it. And actually the whole movie, <laughs> Ed and, and Sean's conversation in the bar when, when they're drunk after he breaks up with Liz and they're talking and they're, you know, lamenting and he's like, ah, you know, there's lots of other women out there, all that kind of stuff. Um, they give the whole outline of the movie in their conversation. <laughs> like he says, tomorrow we're going to get up. We're going to have a bloody Mary. Oh, that's so nerdy. And then we're going to do, and then we're going to go to the King's, you know, blah, the blah, King's blah. head, something, something. And it's all the bloody Mary is, the is, is Mary. That's is Mary. That's, and she's bloody and has a hole in her belly. Yeah. The Mary zombie that's in their yard. Um, and then that yeah, just goes through. So it like literally goes through the whole plot of the movie, uh, in that conversation, which is so fun. That's so much I fun. love things like that. It's great. I really enjoyed this movie. I like uh, I like Shaun of the Dead a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan. You're a huge fan. It makes you squish in your knees. Squish in my knees? Squish in your knees. That is a, that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure when you said that earlier, that was different. It was, was different. I can't figure out what I said your, earlier. In your what? Knees. That's where do you come up with this stuff? I don't know. It's in my head. I just put words and sounds together. Oof. Like squish, just you know. I don't think that that one sounds really inappropriate. I don't like it. Squish in the ninis. Yeah. I can't figure out what it, what I said earlier that was so funny. Uh, I don't know. That one didn't. That one doesn't land as far as well because that one sounds. <sighs> I tried. That one sounds like I don't know. You can't win them sounds all. Sounds super creepy. You can't win them all, kiddos. <laughs> Sometimes you strike out and that's okay. Sometimes you throw up on yourself on a plane and that's okay too. Oh man, <laughs> this week. <laughs> This episode has been so hard to make. This episode brought to you by sheer fucking willpower. Yeah. Lots and lots and <laughs> we lots. We did it finally. Lots and lots of, of yeah, failure this week. You must fail in order to succeed, Yoda says. <sighs> oh, my goodness. We don't have a, a theme for the next one yet. We haven't decided. No, but I do. I do. I want to find something. We haven't got a new. We haven't got a new episode yet. I got to look up and see what, what what's going to be next. But, but I want to get away be, from the politics. It's not going to be identity politics. It's not no, going to be politics, politics. No, no it's more, not going to be no nationalism, racial, politics. racial or nationalism. Or, We're going to go something a little bit more like. I want cats. I want, I want like cat mutant zombies. Yeah. Somebody being stabbed in the back with a corn cob. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Lots of corn cob foo. Bring back sleepwalkers. Oh, speaking of foo, Joe Bob's new show airs <gasps> on Shutter. Joe Bob's new show. Starting on Friday this Friday. week. Friday. You know what you're doing Friday. I'm very excited. You're watching Shutter. Joe Bob. I cannot wait. I am so excited. And Joe Bob said that he might be coming to Reno. Oh, with that's his right. He did. He sent me a message. Show. He sent me a message on Twitter and asking about venues in Reno. No joke. I'm still fangirling out about that. I am seriously in love with that man. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. let's get him here. And I love, you know. I love his. I love all of his stuff. I love like, it. He's all of his writings. Too. All of his. All of his political writings. I am a big, big, big fan. So, I want yeah. to start a. I want to start like a Joe Bobbian political party. Joe Bobbian. Joe Bobbians. The Joe Bobbians. <laughs> the Joe. It's not too much like the like David like the Koreshians. Kind the- of. Yeah. I think you're <laughs> you're you're starting a cult. Possibly. Is that what you're doing? Don't Ooh, do that. That's a good idea. I've always wanted to start a cult. That's a. Really, that's well, really you do idea. have the the pastoral counseling background. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah, and we do listen to enough laughs podcast on the left. We could probably figure we it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Totally figure it out. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Um. So yeah, I'm really. I like to be. Yeah. You know, out of the get out of this politics thing for a while because I'm just we're bombarded with it too much. I don't like it. I'm done. Yep. I'm done with turning on everything and seeing politics. Yeah, and but until our next episode, I'm like I'm like the thing, the the like Kurt Russell in the thing, <laughs> you know, where he's just like he's just he's just like nobody trusts nope, anyone. I anymore. can't trust anyone. Can't Don't trust, trust anyone. anything. Don't trust anything. Nope. You know, just whatever. Oh, you're so jaded. It's yeah. a really good color on like you. Like you said earlier, you need to be the the Sweden of British. <laughs> I need to be the Sweden of British. <laughs> when you meant to say the Switzerland of <laughs> the Switzerland. Of- the Switzerland of Britain because you were tired. That was because you said you are neither an Anglophobe or an an Anglophile. So you're the Sweden of British and the Sweden of British. (laughs) I had to squeeze that in there somewhere. I, instead of the Switzerland of Britain, 
You not, were the Sweden and the British. Not a history major <laughs> am I, uh, for anybody that knows me. English? I literally know nothing about anything but my field. <laughs> And so it's really Words hard. Are hard. Words are English. hard. Two neurons rubbing together, trying to do stuff right now. Not worky. Not um, worky. Not worky. No, no worky. worky. <laughs> no worky this time. Next time. All right. So next time we are going to, uh, we're going to talk about uh, another phobia. Yeah. But we don't know what it is yet. But until then, please go check out Joe Bob on Cheddar on Friday. Yay, Joe Enjoy Bob. Enjoy that. Get your little horror and information spill because he just knows everything about everything. Um, and I just want to pick his brain forever, mm -hmm. but and fear and fear does. We are going to, uh, we're going to have finally have a new episode out. Please share it. Please pass it around. Um, please promote it to your friends. Please rate us. And until next time, stay afraid, stay very afraid. <laughs>